This is Join Us in France, episode 197. Bonjour, I'm Annie, and Join Us in France is the podcast where we talk about France, its many quirks, its history, its language, and of course, destinations in France you want to learn about, because hopefully you'll be visiting soon. On today's episode, I answer a listener's question. Jacqueline Durand is from South Africa. I'm not sure how you say that name in English. Jacqueline, Jacqueline Durand, maybe? And she asks about the prices of common items in France because with the exchange rate, she's not sure how far her money will stretch. So let's talk about it. If you're interested about budget and visiting France, you should also check out episode 141, Paris on a Budget, and episode 75, France on the Cheap, on bus transportation in France. There are going to be a lot of photos of the many food items I'll be talking about in this episode with their prices. You can look them up by going to joinusinfrance.com forward slash 197, the number 197. Join Us in France is brought to you by Patreon supporters and Addicted to France, the small group tour company for people who want to enjoy France to the fullest with zero stress. We have upcoming tours for May 2018. It's too late to sign up for any of them, but uh, to see the future ones, you can check it out on addictedtofrance.com. Join Us in France needs your support. To see all the ways you can support the show, visit joinusinfrance.com forward slash support. Today's episode has been inspired by a question from Jacqueline Durand on the Join Us in France close group on Facebook. She said, love your podcast. Thanks so much. More on the southwest of France will be great. Oh yeah, we'll talk about the southwest of France some more, I'm sure. Another great podcast about the expenses once you are there. We are coming to the Lot and Tarn area in June from South Africa. And with the weak rand, that's the money in South Africa, against the euro, it is a real concern that our money will not go as far as we think it will. It will be great to get some tips on how to stretch it further, as well as indication of the cost of things like plat du jour, cappuccino, bottled water, wine, etc. Well, I'll tell you right now, plat du jour is going to be, uh, it depends a lot on the type of restaurant you go to. Some places you can find it as low as 14 euros and some places it'll go as low as 100. So, uh, yeah, it depends on what you pick. But you will find a lot of plat du jour for around 14, 15 euros. Cappuccino is going to be about 5 euros. Bottle of water, euro 50, if it's a big one. Uh, and you buy it at the grocery store. Again, if you buy it at uh, the corner store vendor, it might be some more. If you buy it at the museum store, it's going to be more. But if you buy it at the grocery store, it won't. Wine, I'll talk about that in a minute. Keep up the great work. Your podcast keep me sane and dreaming about my holiday in France. Well, thank you so much. I'm happy to keep you dreaming and uh, excited about your holiday because I think a big part of planning a vacation is the excitement coming up to the vacation and the planning. And then I asked followers, other followers on the Join Us in France close group on Facebook to tell me what they want to know about specifically. And you all had a lot of questions. So I will answer most of those today. I went to check prices at different grocery stores around Toulouse. Prices in Paris might be a little bit higher, maybe by 10%, but uh, everyday life in Paris isn't that much more expensive than anywhere else. Uh, the biggest difference is the price of real estate, but we're not going to talk about real estate in this episode. 
Whether or not these items will seem expensive to you depends on where you live, of course. Uh, listeners who live in New York City or San Francisco or places like that, uh, or even London, are going to find Paris quite inexpensive. And people who live in uh, places that are cheaper will probably find Paris to be about the same. Or It, it really depends on where you're from, really. So here are some of the things you asked me about. I tried to group them by, uh, you know, by um, things that make sense together. So uh, breakfast items. For me, uh, those breakfast items uh, are, uh, if you're going to have breakfast at your, uh, if you have an Airbnb, or even if you want to have breakfast in your hotel, you could buy a few things and have them in your room. Jam. The co People ask me about the cost of jams. Well, I... Around where I live, you can buy an assortment of little um, Bonne Maman uh, jams. There's five small little jars in there, and it's three euros and 21 cents. Those also make great gifts, by the way. And then there's my favorite strawberry jam. It's by Andros, and it's supposedly... Um, a little lighter in sugar. I, I, I don't think that really counts, but the flavor is really, really good. It's a strawberry jam and it's for, it costs two twenty nine at the grocery store and they do other types, but the strawberry is my favorite. Then you have some fancier jams, ones that where the, you know, they are uh, made by smaller manufacturers because Bonne Maman is a huge jam manufacturer and they also make cookies and other things. Um, but the, the, the more artisan kind of jams, they will run you about five euros, six euros, and these make for great gifts. All right, another big breakfast food is coffee. And in France, almost everybody has Nespresso coffee machines. And so if you are at an Airbnb, probably uh, you will have a Nespresso machine in your apartment. And you can buy capsules. Um, several years ago, Nespresso were the only ones that were, they had a patent on the on the capsules, and so everybody had to buy their capsules, and they cost about, oh, four euros for 10 of them. Uh, but by now, there's a lot of competition because the, pat the patent has expired, and so you can buy uh, other brands, but for the most part, they cost about four euros or the cheaper ones are going to go for three twenty, three fifty, and that's for ten capsules. So that's that's a pretty good price. Another thing that you will probably need for your breakfast is milk. If you buy a good quality uh, organic milk, it'll cost a euro seventy five per liter in France. I've seen milk a little cheaper than that. I've seen it a little bit more expensive, but it's about around one seventy per liter. Then, of course, for breakfast, you're going to need bread. Bread you can get in various places. If you, if you get your bread at the grocery store, it'll be a little cheaper than if you go to a bakery. But is it worth the price, the, dif the, pr the difference in price? I'm not sure. But you can get some nice bread at the grocery store for uh, Euro 60. For, in for instance, we have this uh, pain maïs, so it's a uh, corn bread that I really like, and it's a Euro 60 for the loaf. Um, at the grocery store, in the in the refrigerated section, so it's with the yogurts. You can also get uh, Starbucks cappuccino and macchiato and things ready-made drinks. And so, uh, if you if you feel like those, they cost a euro ninety nine for a little one of those. At the grocery store, you can also get croissant and uh, pain au chocolat or chocolatine. And they are very, very cheap at the grocery store. They're not that good. But uh, at my grocery store, you can get four croissants and four chocolatines in a box. So it's a, it's a set. And it's for €2.80. That's the cheapest way to get your croissant and chocolatine. 
Of course, they're not that good. If you go to a bakery, you will pay minimum 80 centimes, 80 centimes for a croissant. And it can go up to a euro 30, a euro 40 if it's made with butter and if it's a bigger one and whatever. I recommend buying your uh, Danish type of things at the bakery. They they had a regular bakery, not in a grocery store. They taste a lot better, I think. I For that item, I wouldn't skimp on that. <laughs> Honestly, um, I wouldn't skimp on that. And then when you're in France, you'll probably want to have some candy, some chocolate, things like that. Well, at the grocery store, you can get this really nice... Um, very French candy. It's kind of a mint. It's called Vichy. I'll put the picture. I have. I took a picture. It's not a very good picture, but I, you know, I was at the grocery store trying to take pictures of items, and I felt a little self-conscious doing that. So sometimes I moved a little bit, uh, and they were all done with my cell phone. Not great, but uh, the Vichy pasty Vichy will cost you a euro thirty-six. And to me, that's really the flavor of France. It would be a good thing if you like mint to. Uh, take back as a gift to, to friends. And of course, if you have children, whether they come with you to France or not, you have to buy them some fraise tagada uh, by Haribo. That's the favorite candy of all French children. I'll put a picture on the website. It does. It's really cheap. It's a Euro 11 for a big bag. And uh, yeah, they're very good. Chocolates, well, you have a variety of chocolates. If you uh, also make great gifts, if you want to take some French chocolate to your back to your family, um, the chocolate bars, so the, the big bars that you will share, are, are, are quite inexpensive. For Côte d'Or, a nice quality chocolate uh, with whole nuts in it, you'll pay 3 40 uh, some, some like the orange one is three sixty four. Uh, some of the the ones with like pear inside or uh, nugget inside or things like that, they're going to be two fifty five, and they're smaller. There's they're not as heavy. Um, so you know you don't you don't break the bank, and you will have some very good chocolate. You have lint, uh, var- various flavors of lint, and they cost between. 169 until you know 2 215 250 that sort of thing very good quality chocolates more or less for a for a nice big bar of chocolate that's a you know 100 grams 150 grams you will pay more or less two to three euros overall. So they're not super expensive. And they, I mean, whenever I take some back to my family in America, they love those. All right, let's talk about cheeses. In France, we have a bazillion cheeses. And I think the grocery store is a good place to buy some cheese. Most grocery stores in France will have both the type of cheese that's pre-packaged, that's usually where you find the lowest prices. And they usually have a section where you there's a person who can serve you a slice of something. Not every store will have it, but m- many of them do. And the prices are a little bit higher there, but not that much. And then you can also uh, go to a fromager, an affineur de fromage. So places like Betty or places like that, or, or mom and pop stores that specialize in being a cheese shop. And those places will tend to uh, carry the more unusual and the more expensive cheeses. Honestly, for a visitor from North America who's not used to lots and lots of French cheeses, if it's not, you know, something that you know a lot about and that you care a lot about, I think you'll be very happy just trying a few cheeses from the grocery store. For instance, uh, Camembert de Normandie, Les Crus, so that's a raw milk um, Camembert. Uh, at my grocery store, it's at three sixty-five. I'm sure if I went to... A, uh, a cheese shop. I will. I would probably pay six or seven for the same item, uh, and probably because it's a you know from a producer who does more refined whatever. But you know the difference between a four euro piece of cheese and a seven euro piece of cheese is something that a, a, a cheese connoisseur would notice. But somebody who doesn't eat cheese every day, they probably 
wouldn't know the difference anyway. Other cheeses I uh, recommend are things like Le Vieux Pané. I'll put a picture of that and that, a piece of that. Well, depending on the size of the piece, obviously, it'll run you three to four or five euros. And it's very nice and creamy. I love that one. Chaume is a very plain, uh, not a lot of flavor cheese that kids like. Uh, a piece of that will, uh, for 200 grams, it'll run you 319. So, you know, it's about 15, 16 euros a kilo for most cheese. And if you go to a cheese shop, it, you'll go more towards the 25 to 35 euros per kilo. So... Yeah, Rocamadour, a great local cheese in the southwest, Les Cru, so raw milk, three sixty for three of them. Not not very expensive. Uh, Roquefort Société, the better one, uh, will cost you about four euros for a nice big slice at the grocery store. Uh, fromage de chèvre, so that's uh, goat cheese. Yeah, three three seventy four five euros, something like that. And then you have the aged cheeses that typically cost a little bit more. So aged Gouda, aged uh, con um, um, Conte, they will cost more or less 20 a kilo and up. So a nice big chunk of it will be four or five euros. Epoise, if you want to go daring, those are the smelly cheeses that you can also find at the French grocery store. They're about five euros a piece. And if you want a plain old camembert, not uh, raw milk, but good quality, get one called President, and that'll cost you about a euro fifty. So, and it's a it's a good quality product. It's just an everyday product that French people eat all the time. You know, we're not always buying the super expensive stuff uh, <laughs> every day. You should also try some uh, blue cheese or some Roquefort. So Roquefort and blue cheese are different. Blue cheese is typically a little cheaper. Uh, the blue cheese will run you about 14 euros a kilo, whereas the Roquefort will run you about 25 euros a kilo. So for the same slice, you'll go from, you know, one seven, under two euros for the blue to just over three euros for the, for the good. Um, well, good is all relative. It just depends on you know, how much, uh, what you like. Uh, the, the, the bûche fondant, there's a product that's really, really tasty. Uh, I'll put the picture on the website, uh, bûche fondant président, again, a président, president, a product for cheese. It's a big production thing, but they, it really tastes really good. That one costs a euro 79. Mozzarella, if you're in France in the summer, you'll find really, really good tomatoes and you can slice up some mozzarella and uh, with some basil and make a really nice salad. A really good quality uh, mozzarella will run you to three euros and you can find it cheaper if you, um, you know, there's plenty of them that are cheaper than that, but the, the really good quality one is three euros. Condiments. Uh, people ask me about the about the price of mustards. So in France, we have this thing where we sell smaller jars of mustard in glasses. They're actual glasses that you could drink of when you're done with the mustard. And people collect them. And so people will just always buy the same brand of mustard for a year or two until they have, you know, a set of six or, or eight or whatever they want. Uh, Maya makes a really good mustard in an interesting looking glass and it's a, a Euro 88. Those make for really good gifts, I think, because French mustard is good. Uh, Savora is a French mustard that I, I just enjoy the flavor, but that one, it comes in a regular glass jar. It's two euros and nine cents. Uh, Amora, the regular, so Amora is the like our everyday mustard that we use in everything, and it, it's on the on the jar. I'll put the picture again on the show in the show notes. But it says Moutarde de Dijon fine et forte, and it's ninety cents. That's the the cheapest one. Another thing that makes for a good gift to take back is fancy salt. So we have these salts in France called Fleur de Sel, Guérande, de Guérande, and they are really good. I mean, they, I, I mean, once it's in the food, it's product. I mean, it's, it's just salt. But 
um, but they taste good and it, it's, it's a good gift. That will run you about four euros for a jar of that. If you want to take back spices, herbe de Provence, for instance, uh, one in a very plain looking plastic bottle will cost you two euros. So, and you know, if, if uh, you are taking back gifts for cooks, herbe de Provence is really good. The other thing you have to try when you're in France is the cornichon. So these are little pickles. We have really good uh, pickles in France. They're kind of tart. So if you don't like vinegar, maybe not. But if, <laughs> but if you like that kind of thing, you should try them. Uh, mini cornichons by uh, Maille are really good and they cost $2.49. You, uh, pickles in America tend to be really, really big. In France, they tend to be smaller. Although you can find the bigger ones too, but... Uh, you will find a big selection of small pickles that go really well with a glass of wine. So try that. We have lots of cookies in France too. So there are some you should try. So when you go to the grocery store, look for stuff that will say regional names like uh, Fine Galette de Bretagne. So that these are the cookies from Brittany and they're like a um, butter cookie. They'll cost you a euro 71 at the grocery store. They're very cheap and they're pretty good in coffee they're very good if you um if you uh, want to try the rouski rouski fondant du roussillon that's a that's a southern french specialty they're very good very very good one of my favorites they cost a pack of that with uh, eight little cakes individually ripe little cakes inside cost a euro 75 and, you know, I think you will have as much fun trying these kinds of cookies than you will trying pastries at the pastry shops because they are different from what you're used to. One thing that I found interesting is that at my grocery store, they were selling the Mer Poulard cookies. So Mer Poulard from the Mont Saint-Michel, she became famous for her cookies and for her cooking. And they sell a big jar of 400 grams of her cookies for eight ninety five. dollars Now, I'm going to be going to the Mont Saint-Michel and I'm going to pay attention to that. I bet at the Mont Saint-Michel, you'll pay twice as much for the same box of cookies because you're at the Mont Saint-Michel. But uh, they are very nice little uh, butter cookies. Then uh, there's a bunch of really inexpensive cookies that French children love, and I love them too, like uh, the Barquette uh, Choco Noisette. I'll put the picture on the website. It's 83 cents for, uh, there's what, like 20 little cookies in there. It's, it's really good. Um, then if you want to get a local cookie, the Chamonix, so that's an orange cookie. Um, again, Look at the website for the picture. It's it's very good. And it's it's a local product that has made it big all over the country. Bonne Maman, I told you about the jams earlier. Well, they also make cookies. And they have cookies like with lemon. And a box of that uh, is a euro 60. They have some that are chocolate and caramel. That's a euro 71. Anyway, it won't break the bank. Then you also have the... Uh, the waffles that are sold in a packet, individually wrapped, and they're very good. Uh, Gaufre de Liège uh, with uh, kind of big grains of sugar inside. Picture on the show notes. You need to try that. It's two euros fifty for. I think there's eight of them in the pack. Um, those all oh, those are fantastic. Group members wanted to know about personal care type of items. So to, to wash your laundry, well. We have these laundry pods now. That's the kind of the most expensive way to go. For 16 pods of Ariel, you, Ariel Ariel, it's a, it's a brand, you'll pay about uh, 10 euros. But you probably won't do 16 loads of laundry. I don't know. If you're going to do laundry in France, just grab a few pods and bring them from home because I don't understand... I don't see how you could make it worth taking a big bo buying a big box of that and you know it's too many you're not going to stay long enough to use that. But one thing that you might need to use is a hand you know the a little it's like a little it's a little bigger than a toothpaste tube 
And it's a laundry detergent that's made to wash by hand. And that costs two fifty three. It's a Genie. It's called Genie Gel Express à la main. And I'll put the photo on the website. It's inexpensive and you can do your little laundry in the hotel room if you need to. And then some other things you might buy, you know, like little... Uh, champagne glasses, disposable, obviously. They cost three twenty for six of them. But you could also buy the real glass one. Body soap. So Dove body soap for a smallish one. It's three forty nine. It's not that expensive. I didn't go checking the shampoo, the toothpaste. But you know what? They'll cost between two and three euros, all of those things. So if you want to buy them in France, uh, it's, uh, yeah, count on about two or three euros per item. For those of you who are going to be staying at an Airbnb and you want to be doing some cooking without actually doing that much cooking, in France we have really good frozen products. The best is from Picard, P-I-C-A-R-D. They have they carry really really good frozen products. Just follow the directions. If you have you have to have an oven for most of these things in your apartment. I mean you have to make sure your apartment has an an actual oven and not just a microwave oven because if you microwave these things they're gonna taste awful. Um, but most of these types of frozen food, even the vegetables, are really good. Uh, at my regular grocery store, not even going to Picard, I can find. Nice mixes of vegetables with potatoes and maybe some uh, bacon bits and things like that. They cost three fifty, and they will fill you fill up two people easily, like easily. Uh, th- th- that's a good uh, thing to do if you're going to be doing Airbnb in France. I think. Now the meats. Now I'm not going to tell you the price of you know ground beef and all that. Um, Although I can tell you it's it's around 8 to 10 euros a kilo, just off the top of my head. Uh, but one thing that lots of visitors buy is cold cuts. So if you go to a grocery store and you want to buy an assortment of cold cuts, so you'll have, f- you know, four slices of prosciutto and six slices of uh, rosette, which is a kind of saucisson, um, etc. That will cost you about five. Well, at my store, it's five seventy eight. Uh, you will find all different types of hams, both the cured ham and the fresh ham, and you should try both the the uh, jambon blanc. So white ham in France is delicious. You should try it. Uh, j- just look around at the at the grocery store. Oh, for some reason, I have a picture of the baguette at the grocery store mixed in with the mi- mixed in with the meats. It costs eighty five cents. Baguette costs f- eighty five cents at my grocery store. It's a euro ten at my baker. I like them both, honestly. I'm not too worried. I if if it's convenient, I'll buy it at the grocery store if I'm there. If I don't need to go to the grocery store, I'll stop at the bakery and have some of that one. Probably the one at the bakery is a little tastier, but they're both good. So, uh, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. Other types of uh, cured meats I will put on the website, but you you pay for like a, a small selection just to try. You pay euro fifty, two euros, just to try a few things, and I think that's a good way to go to see if you like it. In France, we also have a lot of pâté, uh, so that's um, a processed kind of pork meat. Usually, it could be pork or duck. They will cost you, you know, a euro ninety. Some of them a little less. Some of them a little more. Uh, for a good saucisson, so that's a dried sausage thing. That's about fifteen euros a kilo. If you go to a butcher shop, you'll probably pay a little more. But at the grocery store, you can find it for around fifteen euros a kilo. And so one of these kind of uh, U-shaped things will cost you about five euros. They're cheaper ones. I'm looking at one here, but that's 
that's just the one stick. It doesn't. Ha it's not the U sh shaped. It's two forty six. So it just depends on what you want. Just look around and and see what you like. Pate is in a jar. You'll find it for a couple of euros. Most of them. So try some. You know. You. I. I think it's worth buying one and trying it. Now let's talk about pastries. Obviously, the cheapest place you can buy pastry in France is at the grocery store. And it's surprisingly good quality. If you've ever bought pastries at the grocery store in America and were disappointed, I, I get you. It's, in America, it's not very good. But in France, even the pastry from the grocery store is pretty good. I'm not saying that the one at the fancy bakery isn't better. That would be a lie. But... Uh, if all you can afford uh, is the one at the grocery store, try some. It's good. Uh, for instance, for millefeuille, for six people at my grocery store is eight euros and thirty cents. It would probably be twice that at a pastry shop. Uh, Tropezienne for six to eight people at the grocery store is seven ninety five. Uh, fraisier, oh, I love those. It's like a strawberry, strawberry cake and cream and stuff like that. It's delicious. For you could cut it up for six to eight people. It's eleven euros. It's those are really good. That if you go to the grocery, st um, sorry, those are the prices at the grocery store. If you go to a bakery, you'll pay twice that. And some of these fancy bakeries that get recommended all the time in uh, travel blogs, well, they'll be three times that. I, I have been shocked at the prices that uh, some of these bakeries charge. But of course, when you walk in, it's only foreigners in there because the only reason why they're there is because they read in a guidebook or they read in a travel blog. And French people are like, you're charging how much for your croissant? Excuse me? No. <laughs> so, you know, don't think that just because it's a f f bakery that you read about uh, somewhere in a blog or in a book that you must go to that one. You know, honestly, bakery pastry shops in France are all pretty good, even at the grocery store. It's surprising. The price of produce in France, well, it varies greatly throughout the season. But right now, I'm recording this late May 2018. For a kilo of apples, you'll pay $2.99 for, you know, perfectly good apples, very nice tomatoes, you know, ripened tomatoes, good quality tomatoes will be at five euros a kilo right now. Cuc a cucumber is going to be 130. Uh, a, a nice, beautiful lettuce is going to be uh, 99 cents, but that's the lettuce that you have to wash yourself. Nectarines are still really expensive because they're not in season yet. So they have to come from Morocco or wherever. And they are, they cost 350 to four euros right now but that's going to go down bananas are about uh, euro 89 per kilo they come from the ivory coast to most of them oh and here's a sorry there there here's a lost frozen item that i put in the wrong place but this is the spinach with cream it's a sp spinach and cream thing if you have it's frozen it's by Fendus, F-I-N-D-U-S. This is a fine product. If you feed it to kids with their eyes blindfolded and you don't tell them what it is and they don't see that it's green, they will love this thing. It's just that some kids won't touch anything green, so that's a problem. But it's really tasty. Oh, I have more frozen stuff. Sorry, I'm, I made a mess of my uh, sorting. We also have really good uh, vegetable. They look like, uh, they called palais, palais aux légumes. They look like uh, maybe a, a big thick pancake, okay? Uh, and they are made of a mix of vegetables. They cost a euro 85 for, I'm not sure, there's probably four of them in there. And they are pretty good. It's a good way to eat vegetables. Now, let's talk about some ready-made products. These are things that you can warm up in the oven or uh, just eat them cold, like sandwiches, from the grocery store again. So um, you, you have an area of the grocery store that has, it looks like, um, it's what we call traiteur. 
it's where they will slice ham for you and they will serve you, you know, smaller quantities of things. And they usually have a lot of products in that area that you can just warm up. Uh, so we have something called boucher au quoi de veau, au machin de veau? Au riz de veau, boucher, boucher au riz de veau. Oh, yeah, so if you want to have some uh, sweet breads, these are like... It's it's like a flaky pastry with su- sweet breads in it, and you warm it up in the oven. I bet that's really tasty. You can buy ready-made lasagna, cannelloni, things like that. Uh, for like, let's see, the ready-made lasagna is for three people, probably two or three people. It's seven euros. So if you have an oven, that's a good choice. Uh, sandwiches, ready-made sandwiches. They will, from the grocery store, they will run you anywhere between a euro seventy to, uh, well, actually, here's one that's cheaper. That one's ninety-nine cents. Um, they can cost as much as three fifty, depending on how big and how many. Another thing that's really good for visitors who want to have some vegetables but don't want to cook too much is buying ready-made salads, and we have like carotte râpée. For a euro thirty-five, you can have tabbouleh for a euro fifty-seven. Uh, you can have a cucumber salad for two seventeen. Um, beet salad, those are pretty tasty. A euro seventy-three for the little can. You can buy uh, noodle salads. Uh, noodle salads tend to be a little more expensive. They're going to be between three fifty and four fifty, but they're really easy. I mean, you just—they usually come with a little fork and everything. So they're really easy to eat on the go. Gnocchi. Oh, we have these really nice gnocchi. So that's an Italian thing, but they're made to be warmed up in a little butter in a pan. Ooh, delicious, delicious, I'm telling you. (laughs) Uh, You can also buy crepes, ready-made crepes with the filling and everything. All you have to do is warm them up in the pan and they will cost you about two euros per person. Quiche. Uh, about the same. Two little quiches at the grocery store that you can warm up in your oven are two euros. Or you can buy a bigger one for four people for 240. You know, grocery store prices are not that expensive in France. You can buy croque monsieur. So uh, the stuff uh, that you buy on the, in Paris all the time, if you buy it at the grocery store and warm it up yourself in your oven or in your in a pan with a little bit of butter, that would be two euro nine uh, for two croque monsieur. Probably it'll only feed up one person though, because they're not very big. You can find all sorts of tarts with spinach and other things. About two seventy at the grocery store. It's uh, it's a good way to go. Pasta boxes, uh, three thirty six, and plain old sandwiches are around two euros. Now, if you go to a bakery to buy your ready-made sandwich, you'll probably pay 350 to 450 for that same sandwich. It'll be tastier from the, from the bakery because it's made that day and it's fresh bread and all that. So, you know, if, if you're really broke, go get a sandwich at the grocery store. If you can afford the ones at the bakery, I think you'll be happier. In the ready-made kind of category, you will also find a lot of classic French dishes that you can buy. They are made, they're, they're not in the refrigerated section. They are, you know, on the shelves. And they are made for one person. You put in a microwave and you have your meal. Uh, we have stuff like poulet basquez, canard à l'orange, uh, langue de boeuf, if you want to be daring, so it's beef tongue. Um, most of those will cost around, the cheapest one will be 250 and the more expensive one will be 350 450 um, it, it, You know, it's, it's good. if you want to try a classic French dish, but you don't want to sit at a restaurant and, and pay 20 euros for it, you could have a, a taste of it from the grocery store it won't be as good okay i'm not gonna lie but uh, for for 288 you can have a, a buff bourguignon that you can just warm up in the microwave uh, for two minutes it's not a very big portion because the portion is 210 calories 
So, you know, <laughs> you're not going to be full very long. But you could try it. It's 288, you know, why not? The French grocery store is also a great place to go get some of these uh, scary French foods that we uh, talked about in episode. Let me look it up. What episode was it? It was episode 193 called The Cornucopia of Bizarre French Foods. If you want to try some of those, you could go to the grocery store and get a thing of tripes for four uh, four euros, 47 cents. It won't... (laughs) Uh, never mind. <laughs> I was going to say something rude. Um, Aligo, you can buy at the grocery store. So a kilo of Aligo at the grocery store is seven fifty, and you can just warm it up in a pan. Raclette, if you want to just boil some pot- potatoes and melt the cheese to put on top, that's $4.72 for 420 grams. So that's something you can easily make at your apartment. It'll be a little smelly, but whatever. Chou uh, farci à la Véronaise. So these are the local, you know, the regional weird foods. That's for a jar of it, it's eight thirty. If you want to try it, why not? More tribes for four fifty-five. Uh, Garbure du pays. So that's one food I have never tried, but it's uh, it's uh, c'est du chou. What do you, what do you call that chou? Uh, cabbage. It's a cabbage dish uh, with duck in it. That's seven fifteen for the jar. You can have obviously you can have all the duck that you want. Uh, those cost a little bit more. Like I'm seeing jars at seventeen eighty-five. Uh, foie gras is one of the more expensive foods that you can get. It's foie gras is at around 130 to 200 per kilo. So it's it's a more expensive food. But of course, if you just want to try a little bit, you can buy a little jar that's uh, 100 grams and you know pay 15 euros for it. So um, that's one good way to to go. And if you want to take home duck grease to make great potatoes in it, you will pay four nineteen for the jar of duck grease. And trust me, that's worth gold. You can take home some cassoulet. They come in some nice jars uh, to feed two people. It costs you seven eighty five. So you know it's it's not a super expensive thing. Now cassoulet, you have to be careful. Most jars of cassoulet, they will just say au confit, which means that there's duck in it. But if they if they don't say that, then it's going to be pork sausage in there. And that's good too, but it's not duck. So it's going to be a little cheaper. You can find classic dishes like from the Basque country, piperade. You can find it at the grocery store. It's 6 10 for the jar. Uh, pot au feu, you can find at the grocery store. I found one in my grocery store pot au feu de canard. So it's it's a pot au feu but made with duck. I had never seen this. It's 635 for the jar that will f- feed one person very generously. Bottled water. Okay, so for the small bottles, the 33 centiliter bottled water with a nice cap on it that uh, won't open in your bag. So 33 centiliters, that's the size of a can of Coke. And those cost 33, 32 cents at the grocery store. If you buy them on the street from a vendor, you'll probably pay Euro 50 for the same thing. Evian 50 centiliters, so that's a half a liter, it's a bigger bottle. For the pack of six, it's 228. So I guess you could come, go to the grocery store, pick up some bottled water, and just take it with you when you go out. Badwa, that's the that's the bubbly water, that costs for six bottles of fifty centiliters, it's two seventy or three euros, depending on what. I don't know. They look exactly the same, but it's about three euros for the six half a liter bottles. Okay, wine. Wine is very cheap in France, but of course you can also buy a, pay a fortune for wine. Overall, five euros for a bottle of wine is fine. Almost anywhere in France. You could go higher, but at my grocery store, I have a hard time finding anything that's more than 50 euros for a bottle of wine. So, 
uh, there are some places in Paris, I'm sure you will find at the grocery store anywhere between five euros and 50 euros, but most of the bottles will be right around between the five and 10 euro price range because that's what French people buy. I'll put lots of pictures on the website so you can see the specific. A bottle of Sancerre, my picture is terrible, but Sancerre is the, one of the, it's a white wine and it's a little bit more expensive. You can expect to pay between 13 and 15 for that at the grocery store. You need some olives to go with your wine, and that will run you two euros and 39 cents. <laughs> champagne. You can find perfectly good champagne in France at the grocery store for 30 euros a bottle, and some of them even less. And if you're willing to go with uh, like this brand, Charles Courance, but it is a real champagne. It says champagne on the bottle, so it is a real champagne. That one is 1820. So the way you decide, if it says champagne, it is a champagne. It's, in France, you're not allowed to use the word champagne unless it's that method of production. So it looks like you can get some between 18 and up. Most of them are around 30. I'm sure you can find some that are more, but a perfectly bo good bottle of champagne in France is about 30 euros. And then you can go cheaper, bubbly, but cheaper. Crémant uh, de Loire, for instance, is six euros a bottle, and it's pretty good. Muscador, oh, this one. This was my mother's favorite. It's a very sweet kind of bubbly drink, and it's two nineteen. I always, whenever we have a family party, I always bring a bottle of that in memory of my mother because she was cheap and she never wanted to buy champagne. So anywhere she went, she, she brought that, which was a little bit embarrassing at time. But Clairette de D is also another bubbly that's inexpensive and it's six euros a bottle. So You can drink plenty of bubbles uh, in France for less than champagne. And of course, if you come in the summer, what we mostly drink is rosé in the summer. So there's famous uh, brand by now, Rosé Piscine. So th that's your swimming pool uh, rosé wine. It costs $4.43 a bottle. For a bottle of rosé, you should plan on spending anywhere between Four and no more than 10. I've never seen a bottle of rosé for more than 10. That would be highway robbery. Uh, yeah. Mostly they're around five euros a bottle. And then, of course, at the French grocery store, you can find a lot of appellation contrôlée. So you can find wines from specific regions of France that will run you six, seven, eight euros per bottle. And they are pretty good. And if you know your wines and you know what you're looking at, you will enjoy. But even if you know nothing about wine, just grab one where the, where the, the sticker looks good around five, between five and 10 euros and you'll be happy. And you can even buy some beer in France. Um, there's a selection of uh, unusual beers at my grocery store, and they cost, for the most part, per bottle, so a 33 centiliter bottle, the size of a can of Coke, they cost anywhere between a euro fifty to to three fifty, depending on where they come from. And so, if you're a beer person, you can look for specialty beers, and you can usually buy some uh, by the bottle. And Heineken in France, so for 12 pack of glass bottles, it's 10.55 for the Heineken. And I'm going to end this with yogurts. Yogurts are delicious. You should try them. They're the best breakfast food, I think. You can get uh, Mami Nova, so six of them for 3.15. The people on the group seem to think that the yogurts in the glass jars are the very best, and that can be true, but it doesn't, you don't, it, they don't have to come in a glass jar to be good, you, you know. Um, but the ones that do come in a glass jar tend to be good. And why do we use glass jars? Because French people recycle glass very well, and we know that it's better to buy your yogurt in a glass jar and recycle it than uh, a plastic, you know. Uh, Bonne Maman also does yogurts, strawberry. So this is a yogurt with strawberry jam at the bottom. It's really good. Uh, 
two of them, I think. There's only two in that pack. And that's a Euro 59. Oh, Fissel. Fissel. You have to try that. It's a Euro 94. Oh, and then we have all sorts of goat milk yogurt. Those are so good. I like them better than sheep, than, uh, than, well, are they goat milk, sheep milk? I'm not sure. Anyway, there's a sheep on the label. On the, yeah, and there's a picture of a sheep on there, so you can tell. Le Petit Basque is a, is a good brand, and that's one seventy nine for two of them, and I go through a lot of those. So I will put a ton of photos on the website for those, so you can see the products that I tend to buy and that I tend to like and that I recommend. And if you're in France and you're on a budget, you definitely want to get your most of your food from the grocery store and... Uh, Get daring a little bit. You know, we have some really good products like creme brulee. Okay, if you go to a restaurant and you order creme brulee for dessert, it'll probably be five euros. Usually dessert at a restaurant is five euros. Well, if you go to a grocery store and you buy creme brulee, it's a euro 67 for two of them. You see? So there's the difference. <laughs> um, you can eat really well in France from the grocery store. And if you're on a budget, that's really what you should do. Or if you are at an Airbnb and you just want to try things like tarte au citron, so lemon tart, a uh, euro 95 for two of them at the grocery store. If you go to a bakery and buy a lemon tart, it's going to be 350 per, you know, per person. I'm, I think it's a little better if you get it from the bakery but the one you get at the grocery store is perfectly fine too. So uh, don't feel too bad. Oh, fraisier. So I, I bought one last night and I ate one last night. It's made by Bonne Maman Fraisier. It's a Euro 92. It was delish. See, and there's two of them for Euro 92. So uh, you, all sorts of wonderful yogurt in France. Uh, so long as you don't get the 0% yogurt, okay? If you, if you get the 0% fat and if there's no fat in the no sugar in it, it's going to be gross, like in any other country in the world. So you need to get your yogurt with a little bit more fat in it. Uh, La Laitière is a really good brand for eight of them. So a pack of eight mixed kind of flavors, 349. No, 341. And, you know, you buy a pack of that for your for your family at your Airbnb. You stick it in the fridge and you eat one each in the morning for three forty one, it's a it's a really good breakfast food. Danon makes good products in France, so long as you don't get the zero percent ones, as well. So enjoy eating at out of the French grocery store. I think the prices are really good, and if you're on a budget, there's little grocery stores all over Paris. You don't have to schlep it to a big one out in the periphery or whatever. Just just go to your neighborhood little grocery store where you are in Paris and you will find very reasonable price. And again, I want to encourage you to go see the um, uh, the website for this because I'm going, I took a ton of pictures and there's a bunch of products that I don't, I didn't mention here that I will put on the website. So that'll be joinusinfrance.com forward slash 197. Thank you, Walter Anaziewski. Ooh, what a nice name. Lorraine R. and Robin Noel for pledging to support the show on Patreon this week. And my thanks to all the other patrons who support the show month after month. Thank you for giving back. To support the show on Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash join us. P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And it looks like some of you are not taking full advantage of your Patreon perks. Maybe they are sending you the emails, but they go to your trash or something. So what I would like to encourage you to do is to go to patreon.com, go to your pledges and look at what's there. And from there, you can actually switch rewards. So there are two five euro rewards for people who support the show there's the lunch break french and there's the french history brief and i have asked 
twice uh, the support people at Patreon. And the first person told me, no, once you sign up for the French History Brief, that's all you're going to see. And the second person I asked said, no, if you support at five euro at five dollar uh, level you can see all of your five dollar tiers and so i don't i'm not sure how it's supposed to work on the site but i do know that if you go to patreon.com and you go to um the place that says your pledges you can edit rewards and you can go to the different rewards and get all of them well all of them or below okay And thank you so much for supporting the show on Patreon. And thank you also, Gloria Leanheart, for your one-time donation. Those are really helpful, too. All the ways you can support the show are listed on joinusinfrance.com forward slash support. And thank you for checking it out. Now, my personal update, I'm super busy preparing for the uh, tours coming up. I'm really, really excited. I just love sitting down and reading all the fun stories of things that happened places and all the background and make sense of it because there are a lot of things that you hear repeated over and over again but they don't really make sense historically if you think about it so digging in and looking for answers is something that I love doing and so these tours give me the opportunity to do that and also force me to do that because I wanted to share really interesting stuff with everybody and so I really look forward to meeting the tour members coming up very shortly And my new dog is doing great. Gus is doing great. We've done a whole battery of tests on him because he had a heart murmur and we didn't know how bad it was. It's pretty bad. Heart heart conditions, uh, he's a three out of six. So, you know, it's, uh, he's only seven supposedly. So it's progressing kind of quickly. Um, but we put him on, on medications and he's responding really well to the medications. So we're really happy. And a shout out to veterinarians who are listening out there. Thank you so much for what you do, because I can't understand how it's possible that someone uh, will do an x-ray. So the vet did an x-ray of his chest to see if there was water around the heart. Another vet did a ultrasound and that one specializes in ultrasound, but my vet, my regular vet, she can do x-rays, she can do blood work, she can do cardiology, she can do uh, surgery on all sorts of things. It's oncology, she removes cancers all the time. How is that possible that you can do so much? It's amazing. Uh, so this little dog is getting well taken care of. He's a sweet little thing. We walk every day and despite the fact that he has a heart condition, He's really happy. He's bouncy. You know, we go on a walk and he's bounce, 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 bounce. And he, I let him loose because we walk country paths. And he's running back and forth between whatever he wants to sniff and me and back and forth and back and forth. But I think he used to be a runner because the first day we had him, we left the, the gate open at my house and he ran. And it took us 20 minutes to find him. Uh, so I think that's why he got lost and got himself at the shelter is because he didn't have his name around his neck and he probably didn't get regular vo- walks. And But by now he knows he's going to get a walk every day. He doesn't run anywhere. He's always stuck to me. <laughs> so anyway, um, now the weather. The weather hasn't been great in France this uh, last couple of weeks, but it's looking up. I think we're going to get good weather in Paris. Uh, Par- uh, Toulouse has been rainy, uh, exceptionally rainy for this May, but it's it's going to get better very, very quickly. So I want to remind you that you can tell your friends and your acquaintances who are going to France that they can listen to the show with their Amazon smart speaker or with their smartphone. They can use Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, any number of podcast apps. They can even listen on the website, joinusinfrance.com. And there they can search for all the topics we've covered, which are pretty extensive. To connect with me, email Annie at joinusinfrance.com or leave a message at 1-801-806-1015. We also have the Join Us in France closed group on Facebook. Answer the questions or I won't let you in because I'm a mean person, as you know. (laughs) 
Have a great week of trip planning. Have a wonderful trip to France. I know many of you are heading to France right now. Have a wonderful time over there. And I'll talk to you next week. I'll talk to you next week, but not the week after that, okay? Because I'm going to be away and too busy. Au revoir. The Join Us in France Travel Podcast is written and produced by Annie Sargent and copyright 2018 by Addicted to France. It is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license.